time. We are blessed to be here in the night. And uh, I tell you, the only week that is better than this week is next week. Because technically we start next week on Friday night. Because we are at the halfway point now. And we have the other half coming starting Friday night. We have no meeting tomorrow night. But we are on Friday night, and the topic is Breaking Family Curses. Breaking Family Curses, and you want to be here for that. On uh, Sabbath night, Saturday night, we have Sibling Rivalry. And then on Sunday night, that's the night that some of you need to come talk about your daddy's spoiled child. And then we are going to have a wonderful time as we seek to serve God in all the ways that he has called for us to serve him and to do everything that God has asked us to do and uh, just to enjoy each other's company as we see people blessed of God. Now on Friday night we're going to have a special prayer session and we want you to come expecting God to do something special for you. How many of you have their hand out for tonight? Halloween trick, not treat. If you have it, put your hand up. Or oh, you are the fortunate ones. The others will get by the end of the meeting because I know some are being copied because the, the, the main copier uh, is not doing what it's supposed to do. And the main person that operates it is not here right now. And so... The other technicians are having problems in getting it going. So you're going to get it. Those of you who don't have will get by the time you leave. Halloween trick, not treat. This actually is one of the most important messages I'm going to preach here. Because a lot of people's salvation hang on understanding the issues related to this. So bow your heads with me, please. And as we bow our heads for prayer, Offer to God your own situation. Asking him to guide you through whatever situation you have to deal with. Those of you who are hurting physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. As I pray now, ask God to touch your body, touch your mind, touch your heart. Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the opportunity to come and listen to your word. We give thanks, O oh God, because you have said that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. We know you are here with an agenda to bless your people. Speak to each heart and each mind. And Lord, at least one person, at least one, let that person be translated from death to life. Yes. Many have already been changed. But if there's any who has not yet experienced that transformation, grant it tonight as we open your word and we speak about this most important topic. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow evening, a lot of kids are going to dress up in strange costumes and go and knock on the neighbor's door and say, trick or treat. They hope to get a lot of candy and a lot of nice things to eat. And while they're doing this, some of the adults may be looking at their horror movies. Spooky movies, talking about dead and zombies and jumbies. And based on where you come from, those guys have all kinds of names. One island, they talk about Lagahu. In another island, close by, they say Ligaru. You go down south and they tell you about Baku. 
Duffy. Yeah. And the stories you get are elaborate. When I was a child, uh, we didn't have Halloween where I grew up. But we had All Saints and All Souls. And I, as a child, would go and look at people lighting candles on their graves of their departed relatives and line their house with candles. And as a little child, I just liked the excitement and would go and steal candles and make a ball of wax. And it was one night that a lot of kids get a chance to go out in the night late. And so it was excitement for us. Halloween, it comes at the same time. And it's a variation of the same kind of thing. Wherever you go, whatever country you go, it's essentially the same devil business. Why is it devil business? Because it relates to communicating with dead and communicating on behalf of them. Hello. The very first lie that Satan told gives rise to all this spiritism. It's a duplicate, or rather, it's a counterfeit system that the devil sets up for him to get attention. Do not think that Hollywood has put on all these horror movies and these uh, ghost movies and uh, uh, what is the little guy name? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Huh? Do you think that's a mistake? No. Do you think by accident? No. no. The devil wants to be in the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. And so he will carry out throughout the world these stories about spirits and jumbies and all kinds of stuff like that. And the root of all of it is found in the first lie he told. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. But the serpent said unto the woman, You will not surely die. But you'll become as gods, knowing good and evil. You wouldn't really die. And Satan was saying that against the backdrop of the fact that he was already sentenced for execution. He already knew that hell was being prepared for the devil and his angels. Yeah. And he said to Eve, okay, you won't really die. And tied into that is, yes, you may close your eye. You may stop breathing, you may lie down, they may bury you, but you wouldn't really die. <laughs> Suggesting that there is a continuation of life across them. And with that now, he has come up with a lot of different variations. And the variations attack different groups of people. To the secular mind, he comes up with these stories about people with special powers. And uh, after those people, he attacks the church people. And he tells the church people... Guess what? Your departed ones can communicate with you. And he has people who make money off of fooling people. There is a group of tradesmen where I grew up in the Caribbean called Obiamen. And as a little child, not knowing who was who and being brave, I went and solicited the most famous one in my country. I'm not going to call his name, but those of you who listen to the music of the time will know that uh, Slinger Francisco spoke about uh, Melda. 
and how he went to this certain old man. As a child, I went to that guy, that person, for Ikanovic. Didn't know who he was. And I know of a story of a guy who was an advertised old man. Most of them fake anyhow. And this woman came walking by his house and he said to her, girl, what's wrong with you? She said, nothing. He said, yes. I see somebody is trying to harm you. True? Yeah. She said, every morning from about 5.30, so from the east, somebody threw something to harm you. And so she went down the road, finished her business, and gone home planning to see what this is. He made sure that her neighbor on the other side got her away. He said to her, by the way, I don't want to interfere in anybody's business, but I see that somebody from the western side of your house, 5.30 every morning doing something for you. Watch yourself, eh? Next morning, Neighbor on the right side, wake up at 5.30 and open the window. At the same time, neighbor on the left side, open the window and the eye meet up. Oh, who's you? Oh, who's you? And they both continued to patronize. All that was fake. And wet, whichever way you look at it, all spiritism is grounded in that first lie. You will not surely die. You wouldn't really die. And he varies it from place to place, from country to country. Now, spiritualism takes various forms and has been in many civilizations. Exodus 7 tells the story of Moses. What Moses did? He went into Pharaoh and said, God says, set my people free. Pharaoh said, who is this God you're talking about? I don't know about your God and I don't care about your God. You're not going to place. Uh-huh. Moses, who had grown up in the same place with him, said, I'm a messenger of God. He said, what messenger of God? Said, we know you, Moses. He says, look at this. And he told Aaron, throw down his rod. And when Aaron threw down the rod, guess what? Aaron became a servant. And when he saw that, Moses feel good now. Now you know I'm a messenger of God. Uh, Pharaoh clapped his hand. And he called his guys, snake trick. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And his guys threw down their rod. And they became serpents also. Yeah. The agents of the devil work miracles. Yeah. 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 It just so happened that Moses' snake ate up all the other snakes. But you have that happening right there in 1 Samuel 28. You read the story of a man who was appointed by God to, as the first king of Israel. Messed himself up with his arrogance and foolishness. And when he wouldn't hear the word of God, he, he finally decided he was going to go to the witch of Emerald. And so what happens now? Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And her servant, and his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit in, in Endo. This woman is a spirit woman. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went to this woman. And what happened? Uh, 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 something came up looking like Samuel, the prophet that anointed him. And the news he got was bad news. Because the devil has no friends. You will play with the devil, but the devil will play with you. No friends. And Saul was eventually destroyed. Now God's word gives protection from fear and trickery. Amen. 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 Uh, 
uh, two texts I want to read from Acts 17 that says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with a readiness of mind, but then they did what? They searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. Amen? Amen. And Isaiah 8.20 says, to the law and to the testimony, they speak not according to this. It is because there is no light in them. God's word protects you Amen. by informing you that if it is not according to what God has said, it is not true, no matter how dazzling it is. Let me tell you something. This is a serious issue. Trick or treating is no joke. Halloween is no joke. It's a celebration. When you, when you feel research it, you find that the Christians say it's a celebration of the life of the saints and good people. Some others say it's just a general celebration of, of all the dead and it's a prayer for all the dead. It's a celebrating of the fact that the devil told a lie. And around the world, people believe that the dead are not really dead. That is the root of spiritism. Now God pro prohibits his people from mixing with any form of spiritism. Absolute forbidden. Uh, <laughs> Deuteronomy uh, 8, 10 says what? Read with me. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Keep going. Huh? Does the text have more? Yes. Or that use it divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch and they have different categories and things like that. God says don't interfere with it. Don't mess with it. Keep away from it. In modern times, we have people now who organize secret societies and private spiritist clubs. And there's one thing that is common to most of them. They do not tell you their true agenda at the beginning. People go in because of their apparent benefits. Mm -hmm. And after a certain point, when they are hooked, then they find out, is devil that worshiping? Mm -hmm. Not God. No and God says, I'm a jealous God. Yeah. And so I don't want you to get involved with that kind of activity. No witch, no sir. Somebody want to read your palm? Mm -hmm. Same devil. All that kind of thing. Keep away from it. It does not have power over God's people. But if you go messing with the devil, he could hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says clearly concerning death. That death is a state of non-consciousness. Hello. Death is a state of non-consciousness. Interesting words when Jesus spoke about Lazarus. He says, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Many references in the Bible, Jesus describes death as a sleep. It's a state of non-consciousness. Not unconsciousness like it, it is non-consciousness. You, you cease to exist. You cease to exist. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 tells us how man was made. And God what? Uh, for man from the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils the what? Breath of life and man Hello, 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 hello. hello. Say, 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 understanding what you say. And man what? Man got his own? Man received the soul? Man became a living soul. When the breath of God blended with the structure that he made, that 
energized structure now became a soul. So man does not have a soul. Man is a soul. Amen. Amen. And so death is described as a state of non-consciousness. Job says in Job 14, 12. Job 14, 12. What he says here? So man lies down. So man lies down and riseth not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. That's it. Lie down, not getting up. He continues to be dead until when? Jesus comes and awakes all his people out of their sleep. Second Peter. Chapter 3 and verse 10. Huh? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. This is when, this is when, this is when people will be, will, 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 will be raised. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat and all the works therein shall be burned up. God has a plan to put an end to this world system at his time. Amen. But until that time, uh, all the dead stay dead. dead. Yes. yes. You know, I was talking about, uh, I think I tried to preach a sermon here entitled Unnecessary Roughness. Mm -hmm. Any of you remember that? Yeah. You know, in, in football, American football, he, 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 the, the quarterback is trying to lead his team down to the other end and score a touchdown. And the defense of that other team is usually made up of big, strong men. And they can legally knock that quarterback senseless. But if he gets rid of the ball, and after he has gotten rid of the ball, now you hit him. Unnecessary roughness. And you are penalized severely for that. On this topic, I, 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 I find the term unnecessary roughness appropriate. In other words, why does the Bible make so much noise about certain things? One, the Bible makes a big issue over the fact that Moses died and was resurrected. Unnecessary roughness. Why make a fuss about Moses? Oh, Elijah went up to heaven in a chariot of fire. So what? I listen to TV, watch TV and listen to news. And everybody that I hear there, they say they're going up. <laughs> So why, 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 why the Bible have to talk about Jesus Christ went up to heaven? For what? Everybody going. So for the Bible to single out that Enoch walked with God and straight what happened? He gone. Why, why you mention obvious things are not mentioned? So if you're making, the Bible is making a big issue of those who go to heaven and when Christ died, certain people went up to heaven. Why? That's unnecessary. <laughs> if everybody who dies goes, then don't talk about it. There's no need for him to come back. I went to a funeral once. And the preacher, Christian church, the preacher, stand up there and he said, our oh, brother, what you're looking at here is not our brother. He is right now looking down on us. He's in a better place. And I'm saying to myself, why didn't the preacher study the Bible first? You start preaching and he study the Bible. 
And after a while, talking like that, I heard him read the scripture reading. And the scripture reading is that Christ is going to come again. And we must have hope because Christ is coming and there is going to be a resurrection. <laughs> Listen, if I leave here and I go up, and while you're all struggling with the drama of life here, are you drinking milk and milk? <laughs> and I hear they say a news, oh, they have a resurrection. May I come in here? <laughs> come back for what? <laughs> I am heaven already. I must come back for resurrection. <laughs> no. It makes no sense. What the Bible says is that death is a sleep of man You know nothing. As a matter of fact, you know what the Bible says? That when a person dies, the next instant, the next thing they know is a crisis. There is no sensation of time passing. I like to tell a story about a guy who used to work with me in, 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 in St. Augustine, Trinidad. He had a hernia operation, and he told me when he went, he decided he's not going to see. <laughs> and they gave him this, this, this patch, this, this thing to smell, you know, yeah. they, 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 they take chloroform. the anesthetic they, back then, you know, they inhale this chloroform mixture. And he said he took a whiff, and he heard the doctor and the nurses talking, and they're talking and talking, and he said, but he's smarter than them. He's not going to sleep. <laughs> he has to be awake for that, that uh, operation. So he said, take another breath. He took another breath, and he said, they're talking softly, but he knows it. <laughs> and then he said, take a deep breath. He said, take a deep breath. And when he take a deep breath, he feel a little something. And when he put his hand on his side, bandage. it's a bandage. <laughs> Operation <laughs> But he recognized no passing of time. Did not recognize any time passing. And the Bible teaches me that when Christ comes back, he's going to raise all his people together and nobody will recognize any passing of time. He has appointed one day to do this. A, a, a text that sweetens me. Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And this is what he says now. Listen to this piece of mathematics in W. He says, We shall all be changed in a moment. All the change happening in one moment. All who get in change, get in change same time, in one moment. Amen. We shall all be changed in one moment. Yes. How long this moment is? He says, in the twinkling of an eye. And what, what time in history is this, Mr. Paul? He says, at the last trumpet. Yes. All get in change, same time, in a flash, at the last trumpet. Yes. He described that as a mystery. That's the mystery of God. To keep everyone comfortable. Trusting in him. Every person that falls asleep in Christ. The next thing they know. The next breath they take. They are looking in the face of their Savior. Yeah. No time passing as far as they're concerned. They, 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 they don't feel any loss of time. And so, we need to understand this because this is at the root of all Halloween stories. Amen? Amen. Now, dead people have no possible contact with the living. This is what, what the wise man says in Ecclesiastes 9. <coughs> Help me. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Hello. Neither have they any more a portion 
in anything that is done under the sun. The Bible is absolutely clear. He says the living holy shall die, but the dead know nothing. Amen. Amen. Mind gone. Yes. Everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And they have no further part to play in anything done in this world. I say hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Because if not, heaven will have been one sad place. Can you imagine this mother walking across the street with her child? And a car comes screeching and turning around, and she blocked the, 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 the car, and the child standing there, bam, she is killed on the spot. And the child has to grow up begging. And she up in heaven looking down. And the child is suffering. She crying every day. And then her husband bring this wicked woman in the house. And beaten the daylight out of the children. And she watching them from heaven. Hello. That is punishment. That is punishment. Up there, look. No, 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 no. The dead are completely dead. They know nothing. They have no portion, activity on this earth in any way, shape, or form. Psalm 115 17 says what? Huh? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down in silence. They have no praise to give God. No wonder that Jesus says, I am the God of the living and not of the dead. All the dead immediately go to the same place. Let's read two texts. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. All that are in the grave, they all went to the same place, the grave, and they're going to be in the grave until Christ comes. Then they shall hear this, the, the, the voice of God. Acts 2.29 is a very interesting text. This one is sweet. Brethren, Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his tomb with us today. Mm -hmm. Listen to this line now. Talking about unnecessary roughness. For David, somebody help me. Not David into did not ascend into the heavens. But he himself said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down and on. He's talking about Jesus Christ. He says, David is not a sin. David is saying that Jesus Christ is a sin. Mm -hmm. No, he, David didn't make it. <laughs> All right. In, of this count. Yeah. <laughs> David was described by God as a man after my own heart. Yeah. And if the man after God's own heart didn't make it, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. what do you like? Now, another lie the devil tells is that uh, those who don't go up, go down. <laughs> and so immediately upon death, these spirits go down into hell. And this boastful devil, with his arrogance, made people feel he in charge of hell. That's a case of the inmates running the asylum. <laughs> In hell, Satan will not be any boss. He breaks in for his own fire. Satan is not in charge of hell. God says he has prepared hell for the devil and his angels. This is something that God is going to do. Now, at the root of this is the fact that, hey, if you believe 
that the dead are not really dead, then you're going to worship the dead and you're going to communicate and God is not involved in that, therefore I get in all the prayers. But Satan decided, you know the best way to make this thing look good? He's going to let his angels that have superhuman power Work tricks. Right. Fool people. Yeah. They have the ability to appear as this one and appear as that yeah. one. Yeah. And so people will say somebody died here and I hear this voice sounding like granny voice. Mm -hmm. I smell the same powder she used to wear. Mm -hmm. Something passed through the room. Yeah. Tricks yeah. of the devil. Yeah. Do you know there are spiritists that perform medical operations? Put their hand in your chest and take out something yeah. and leave your chest normal. The devil, when he was tempting Jesus, took him up into a high mountain and showed him all the nations of the world in a moment of time. That is before internet. Yes, yes. That's like a laser projection in the sky and he fast forwarded it but he could still see every frame. That's the kind of technology he has. He, you know, you know what his, his first job was? Covering cherub. He was one of the two that covered in the presence of God. And it was there that iniquity mysteriously got in his heart and he wanted to be worshipped. It's interesting. The Bible teaches that God is one God, but three persons. That's a mystery. So if you don't understand it, feel competent. It's a mystery. One God, three persons. So three individual performers, but one God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Father, the name, and those are names for our benefit. Those are not names for heaven benefit. All right. Son is not for heaven benefit. That's for, oh, that's for us to understand the relationship. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. As you look through the Bible, you'll notice there they their MO. The Father sits as and functions as the King of Heaven. So Jesus says, when you pray, pray to the Father. In my name. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third member of this Godhead that functions with an omnipresence that is the facilitator of all heaven's processes. So he is the one that leads you to repentance. He is the one that brings different blessings and things like that. So he functions with this omnipresence as facilitating all that God has decided. The Father sits as the chairman of the board, and Jesus is what we call the working arm of the Godhead. Yes. He is the one that appears in everything uh, hands-on. When he created the angels, he was described as the archangel. Michael. The head over the angels. So the angels, he was their commander-in-chief. He was not an angel. But he was the creator of the angels. As a matter of fact, speaking about this world, uh, John says that the word became flesh and dwelt among, and all things were created by him, Christ. Amen. So Jesus is the one who said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. Every reference where God interacts with man, Jesus is the working arm that comes. And so at the cross, the Holy Spirit was not the one that came. The Father was not the one that came. But Paul says, God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. And Jesus functioned in that way. And so Lucifer functioned side by side with Jesus. As covering cherubs. And he 
was dissatisfied because Jesus get in worship. And he ain't get in worship. And Isaiah 41 says, he said mysteriously, I will ascend above the throne of God. I will sit as the king of the Lord. I will do this. I am going to be like God. And when iniquity came up in his heart, God said to him, that's not right. Turn. He refused to turn. He tricked one third of the angels in heaven. And when, they, when their disobedience hardened into defiance, he and Jesus met head on and fought. And Jesus kicked him out of heaven. And declared him sentenced to die. Put him on death row. But Jesus did not kill him immediately because he wanted to take care of this sin business once and for all. And so he reserved him there, limited him here. This is where you function. And when man got tempted by the devil, the devil said to him, you will not surely die. And that little crack opened a way for him. And this world is thrown into sin. Jesus immediately jumped in. He says, I'm going to put enmity between me and the world. I'm going to die for my sin. I'm going to pay the price. And Isaiah uh, 53 says, and he, Jesus Christ, shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. In other words, when Jesus on the last day give back power to Adam, and all the saved are in heaven at last. And all sinners are blotted out of existence. He will say, well done. Amen. But he did not destroy Satan immediately. Because he wanted to destroy him completely. Amen. Satan's charge was, God is unfair. So God had to allow sin to run its course. And by running its course, when sin is exposed. Nobody will ever be tempted to even think about sin. Yeah. In the language of the Bible, iniquity shall not rise a second time. Amen. 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 And so you need to understand the big picture and understand that Satan wants worship. Yeah. And he gets worship from thousands. Do you know there are spiritists and devil churches? Yeah. That where they where they come up bold and say they're worshiping Satan. Now, what kind of madness is that? You hear about Satan from the Bible. And the Bible where you hear about Satan tell you he's a devil. And now you come in and say this same Satan is your Lord. You can't be an ordinary fool to think something like that. <laughs> The friend of mine said, one man, one man can be so stupid, you have to be a queen. <laughs> to come up with something like that. But that is where we are. Struggling with what happens to the dead. And the spirits of devils working miracles explains what happens now. Now, hell, let me tell you something. Is a place of punishment. Hell a place of punishment, listen to this now, does not now exist. Mm -hmm. huh? There are three words in the Bible that were translated hell from the older languages. Hades, meaning grave. Shuel, meaning darkness. Grave and this only. And Gehenna. Gehenna is the one that speaks to the situation with this place of burning. Alright? Malachi. Malachi 4, 1 says, 